Hello from Cornwall and welcome back to the Football Stadium Show YouTube channel. Tonight I'm here outside of Trangle Park to see Mousaway FC take on Saltash United in the Western League Premier Division for a brand new round the ground. Let's go. Mousel were formed in 1922, making this year its 100th birthday. The area of Cornwall isn't really well known for its football or for our sports like rugby and cricket. However, Mousel have been leading the way to try and change this in 2017, setting up the endorsed academy leading the way for young footballers in Cornwall. In 2018, the club also hosted the Endorsed Cup, which was a competition featuring Mousel, Newcastle United, Bolton Wanderers and Huddersfield Town. Mousel play their home games here at Trungle Park, a lovely ground with a capacity of 2,000. It has a main stand, a terrace behind me, a lovely pitch and a proper entrance. However, it wasn't always like this. The ground has gone through some remarkable changes. I visited back in 2019 when all there was here was an open football pitch and a car park. This change has happened because of a campsite on a nearby field uh, created by the club was visited by lots of people during the pandemic as they weren't able to go abroad. This raised lots of money so they were able to invest it back into the club and build a proper ground. Mousel was a coastal village and this new standing terrace is named the Solomon Brown Stand, honouring the eight-man RNLI crew who in 1981 went out on the lifeboat Solomon Brown to try and rescue a ship, but unfortunately never returned. The team will compete in the Western League Premier Division this season, and tonight's game they're going to be playing Saltash United. It's their first home game of the 22-23 campaign, and it's an absolutely massive one so early on in the season, with Saltash finishing fourth last season and Mounsel coming third. Last Saturday, both teams kicked off their seasons in style, with Torpoint getting thrashed by Mousel away 5-1 and Cleveland in town losing 2-1 to Saltash. Mousel also got an absolutely lovely clubhouse. Lots of trophies are on display. All their tables have the club badge on them. And their bar setup is also really awesome. The club also served food from the Seagull Shack, and of course, we had to try some. Being in Cornwall, we had to get ourselves a traditional Cornish pasty. It cost us £3.95 and included the likes of beef, vegetables, and potatoes. Potato or vegetable? I'm not sure, but it was really tasty. 10 out of 10. So, what do you do here at Mousel? So I am, well, I'm one of, the, one of the directors of the club and I'm a, I'm also the media guy, I guess. So, so I'm looking after on the day media coverage. So I do the filming. Um, I do a lot of the social media coverage here. We've got a social media officer as well who's actually based in Holland and he actually puts the stuff up on, on Twitter and on social media feeds. But I do the filming and getting stuff together here on the ground. And how did you get into all this media? Um, well, I am a former BBC journalist and sports journalist. So I spent quite a long time at the BBC um, and I covered World Cup for the BBC quite a few times and the Olympics um, in London. And um, when I left the BBC, I started teaching sports journalism. So I'm a sports journalism lecturer at Farnworth University. Um, and I get here to Mousel because one of, my, one of my students, one of my graduates two years ago, no, a year ago now, he um, was making a film about the closure of True City's Ground, which closed a year ago. It's a little there now. And during that filming, he, um, he interviewed Jake Ash, who was a True City hero, you know, played in the, in the FA Vaz final at Wembley when True City won. And Jake asked him if, if the student knew anybody who might be interested in helping out with some media work at the club. And he thought of me, asked me, and I came along and met Jake. And um, yeah, I've been here a year now, and um, I'm loving it. And do you do this all voluntary? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the club is run by volunteers. You know, there are a few people in the club who do get you know, paid a little bit for what they do. Uh, but on the whole, most of us do it because we just want to be part of it. And it's... what inspires you to work in non-league and to carry on going? I love it. I mean, I, I've, I love football. Um, I, I think I, I've said it quite a few times, but I've kind of fallen out of love a little bit with the Premiership. I kind of feel it's a little bit, I don't know, gone beyond its roots. And I came down here and it's just, it's just pure football. And it's, as I say, it's run by volunteers. It's, you're surrounded by people who absolutely love the game, who throw their heart and soul at it, both on the pitch and off the pitch, you know, and it's, it's just wonderful. I just absolutely love it. Uh, so since you've started covering the team, has there been any improvements in maybe a crowd numbers or...? I, I, we haven't got any proof of it, but I think there has. I think what we've got now is that 
we use my videos to show people what we're doing here and because the videos look I guess they look good, they look professional. I guess people that want to get involved in the club, whether it be players or sponsors, can see that we were, in, you know, we're mean business. You know, we are, we're a sensible grown-up club, and the videos we make show that. So, you know, if you're thinking about coming to the far west of Cornwall, you might not think that there's going to be a club that is run as professionally as, as we are. But I think the videos help to to undermine underline that. Yes, yeah, so we do a lot of match day content on TikTok. So we follow players, we follow like the warm up, kind of match day stuff. Um, and then we like to do a bit behind the scenes as well, kind of, of who makes the club, kind of. So we've got the campsite, we've obviously got the groundsmen. So it's kind of to highlight the people who don't play, who do a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, so we have a YouTube, uh, but we found that TikTok's quite fast growing. And we just found that more people were kind of watching TikTok. and. Um, we kind of want to get in touch with more like the younger side because obviously Mousel is quite a small place. Cornwall has like an aging population, so this is quite a good, nice way to connect with like the younger generation and kind of with the boys as well. They watch TikTok all the time. I see them on the bus scrolling. Yeah, so they're quite short videos. So they, um, I think they've got the time now to so 20 minutes. You can do a TikTok, but we tend to stick to about 30 second ones. And we have Jake interviews on there sometimes, um, chatting to the players, shoving a camera in their face when I can when I'm allowed to. Um, I want to get them doing some like challenges and things. To... How many views do you get on a TikTok? Um, so kind of averages between about like, 3,000 to 5,000. But uh, when we did one of our newest signing, uh, Reese, um, got 24,000 views. And then our nice little new signing, as we like to call him, Herbie, he does all the lines um, for uh, the groundsman. And that got 150,000 views. And then um, I was picked up by BBC Cornwall and sent a few reports down here. So it's nice to the club. Why was that so successful, do you like? I think it was just... I think people don't really think about how you paint the lines. And I don't think I'd ever thought about it either. So I was just down here one day and I was like, why is there a robot going around? And yeah, so it's really good. I think a lot of people worried that we were getting rid of Billy, but he's just doing the first lines of the season, this little robot. Right. And then Billy, our groundsman, will go and continue doing them, yeah. Eventually, the two teams are out onto the pitch, ready to kick off. The game was very end-to-end, -end, both teams racking up a lot of shots early on. There was also a lot of fouls in the game, and as you'll see, Saul Tash felt a lot went in Mousel's favour. Thirty-five minutes in, Mousel managed to break forward up the right wing. Hayden Turner hitting home with an absolutely fantastic strike. One nil to Mousel. Mousel then seemed to really get on top of the game, forcing two great saves from the Saltish keeper Jordan Duffy right before half time. all the action from the first 45. After 15 minutes both teams are back out onto the pitch ready to start again. As I said earlier, there was a lot of fouls and dodgy tackles.
In the 73rd minute, Callum O'Brien headed home to level the score, a great ball coming into the box from the corner. Mausel immediately hit back, Turner having two great chances. This one, where he gets round the keeper, but it's the side netting with his shot. And this chance, where the forward chips the goalkeeper, only to have his effort hit the post. And that was all the action from the evening, full time, 1-1. One, one. So what are your general thoughts? Uh, I, I thought it was a really good game. I thought uh, from you know the neutrals' point of view, I don't know how many neutrals were here, but uh, I thought it was a good game to watch between two sides who you know, wanted to play and, and wanted to come out and have a go. And obviously our goal helped bring Soltash out the shell a little bit, and they, they pushed on a little bit second half. And I thought it was I thought it was entertaining. Um, could have gone either way. Um, obviously, I thought their keeper was outstanding, made some fantastic saves. Um, so we're frustrated not to win, but we're, we're pleased with the performance. Uh, and did you feel there were some missed opportunities there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, right at the end of the first half there, could have been 2-3-0, um, which obviously makes the game a lot easier second half. Um, and then second half again, the keepers made a couple of one-on-one -on -one saves and then obviously the one off the post in the, in the last minute. You know, you're praying for that just to sort of shuffle in the net, but it didn't. So, yeah, missed opportunities. Um, so, you know, that, that happens. Um, but yeah, we, we feel like maybe two points dropped. Uh, and I know the club are trying to expand football in Cornwall. How are you doing that? I know there's some youth academies here. How are you trying to get the game bigger? So obviously, the you know social media team do a great job of sort of spreading the word of, of what the club are about. Um, there's a fantastic youth section, um, and what we're trying to do is feed that youth section into our development team, who are our reserves. Um, and you know we've got a group of really, on the whole, really young, exciting players in that development team. So the you know the pathway is there for youth team players to come into the, the reserves, and then hopefully eventually come into the first team, which happened a few times last year. So. Um, and the, you know the ground is looking amazing. The club have invested a lot of money into the ground, and um, so yeah, they're try we're trying to do the best thing we can at, right at the end of the world because we're so far away from everything else. And um, so trying to make it attractive to everyone. So um, and I think the club have done an amazing job of that. And I was here at one of your first games in charge a few years ago. How much has the club progressed in terms of ground oh, attendances? So much. You know, obviously progressed in terms of league. Um, but progressed in terms of the ground. It's even unrecognisable from the first time I drove in here when the, the stand behind the goal wasn't there and it was just, you know, just you could see the car park and the fence round. So, yeah, it's, you know, on a night like tonight under the floodlights, amazing pitch. Yeah, it's a brilliant place to be and I feel really fortunate to, to be here and see, you know, that transformation as well. And I know for your playing and managerial career, you've stayed locally to the area of playing at Exeter, Why have you stayed, you know, near to Cornwall? Well, I'm Cornish boy, uh, so. Um, and uh, when I was at Truro, I was sort of settled down and met my wife and we've had kids down here. So, um, you know, I, I was born in Cornwall, so um, just love it down here. And, um, and, and I was really lucky with my playing career to, to have played not within Cornwall, but, but travel around a little bit as well as we went, you know, as the, the club progressed through the league. So I don't feel like I've kind of only been stuck in Cornwall, um, but I Cornwall's a brilliant place. And, you know, this has got to be 
one of the best places in Cornwall down here at Malswell as well in terms of the town and the club and the you know the whole area. So um, yeah, no no desire to go anywhere else at the moment. Um, finally, I know, like I said earlier, it is quite a smaller sort of area of sport around here. So did you feel it was harder to get into the game, or did it make it easier for you? Um, probably for me, I was I was all right. Uh, I, I probably was lucky with timing. Just managed to be around the Truro when they, you know, they obviously went through the went on a big journey, uh, which was luck. You know, just good timing. But I think it is difficult for boys down here. There aren't a great deal of opportunities. So we try our best to create something that's you know aspirational and players and young players can aspire to and, and be part of and enjoy being part of and you know it's a good level now and we're, you know we're trying to do as best we can in the next couple of years but um, I think it's a great place to be part of and, and you know see tonight with a good crowd and lots of youngsters here watching that is a real you know there's a nice buzz about the place and a good vibe and you know attract people like you up here so we must be doing something right. Well, that's the end of yet another Around the Ground and I really hope you have enjoyed watching. Of course the full time result here was 1-1 but I thought it was a really entertaining end-to-end -end game. Uh, both teams looked as equally as good as each other and it definitely could have been 2 or 3 to Mouse or 2 or 3 to Sultash. Uh, like I said, very, very end-to-end. -end. Thank you so much to Kevin, the media guy here, for arranging the interviews and also thank you so much to Emily who runs the TikTok account uh, for speaking to me and for arranging everything. And of course a huge thank you to Jake Ash, the manager of Mausel for also agreeing to speak to me. If you did enjoy watching, please make sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. And until next time, see you later. Bye.